It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. As pretty much everybody know, Joe Biden just ran on a campaign that pretty much preached about unity. Oh, it is very important that we're unified in America. We must unite together for one single cause. However, within two days, yes, within two days, he pretty much screwed everything up already. The first thing, of course, is the idea of Joe Biden supporting the idea of equality of outcomes and not equality of opportunities. Section 1 policy. Equal opportunity is the breadwalk of American democracy, and our diversity is one of our country's greatest strengths. But for too many, the American dream remains out of reach, and trends disparaging our laws and public policies, and our public and private institutions have often denied that equal opportunity to individuals and communities. Our country faces converging economic, health, and climate crisis that expose and exacerbate inequities, while a historical movement for justice has highlighted the unbearable human cost of systemic racism. Our nation deserves an ambitious whole of government equity agenda that matches the scale of opportunities and challenges that we face. It is therefore the policy of my administration that the federal government should pursue a comprehensive approach to achieving equity for all, including people of color and others who have been historically underserved, marginalized, and adversely affected by persistent poverty and equality. Affirmably advance the equity, civil rights, racial justice, and equal opportunity is the responsibility of the whole of our government because advancing equity requires a systematic approach to enabling fairness and decision-making process, executive departments and agencies, agencies must recognize and work to redress inequities in these policies and programs that serve as barriers to equal opportunity. This is just so freaking crazy. Just Joe Biden right now just stated that he's gonna hire people based upon their skin color. That is so racist, actually. Like, that actually goes against, like, the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Now, the whole entire idea of the Civil Rights Act is to treat everybody the same as everybody else, right? To hire people, you know, based upon their skill level, regardless of your race. And here this guy is, you know, doing right now is trying to reverse that and say, well, you see, you're black, you're an X, Y, Z minority, and so therefore, you must actually need some sort of quota. That is crazy. That is really, really crazy, but it continues on. Executive order on preventing and combating discrimination on the base of gender identity or sexual orientation. Now, this one is really juicy because this bill is essentially saying that if a trans person wanna fight with a biological woman, they cannot discriminate because of that reason. Now that is like the juiciest part of the whole entire thing, so let's check it out. Section one policy, every person should be treated with respect and dignity and should be able to live without fear, no matter who they are or who they love. Children should be able to learn without worrying about whether they be denied access to the bathroom, the locker room, or school sports. Adults should be able to earn a living and pursue a vocation knowing that they would not be fired, demoted, or mistreated because of whom they go home to or should be access to health care and secure a roof over their head without being subjected to sex discrimination. All people should receive equal treatment under the law, no matter their sexual orientation or gender identity. These principles are reflected in the Constitution, which promises equal protection to laws. These principles are also enshrined in our nation's anti-discrimination laws. Among them are Title IX of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 as amended and Brostock v. Clinton County 950 U.S. 2002. The Supreme Court held that Title IX preemptation of discrimination because of sex covered discrimination on the basis of gender identity and sexual orientation. 
Under both talk reasoning, laws prohibit sexual discrimination, including Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972 as amendment, the Fair Housing Act as amendment, and Section 412 of the Immigration and Nationality Act as amendment, along with the representative and placing regulation, prohibit discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation, so as long as the law do not contain sufficient detection to the contrary. Translation. Well, you see, if you don't allow that trans person to fight that woman, you see, you're a bigoted piece of shit, and so, therefore, that's literal discrimination. Well, you see, in the whole entire world of sports, we know for a fact that the mental mass between men and women and their skill sets are vastly different in comparison. Of course, like, people don't want to acknowledge it nowadays because of reasons, but is that the truth? Like, women and men are built differently. And so naturally, of course, a man is way stronger in comparison to a woman. Now that said, I do think that we should probably do in fact divide a sports because it makes no sense to have like men and women together in sports because women probably get hurt and so that's why there's a separate sort of category for women for that kind of stuff. And so to me it makes no sense, makes no sense whatsoever to have of course like these biological little men fighting against a woman. It just does not make any sense to me whatsoever. Executive Order on Ensuring an Equitable Pandemic Response and Recovery Section 1 Purpose The COVID-19 pandemic had exposed and exacerbated severe and persuasive health and social inequities in America. For example, people of color experience systemic racism and structural racism in many facets of our society and are likely to become sick and die from COVID-19. The lack of complete data deranged by race and ethnicity on COVID-19 infection, hospitalization, mortality rates, as well as underlying health and social vulnerabilities have further hampered efforts to ensure an equitable pandemic response. Other communities, often in the data, are also disproportionately affected by COVID-19, including sexual and gender minority groups, those with disabilities, and those at the margin of our economy. Observe inequity in rural and tribal communities, territories, and other geographically isolated communities plays a place-based approach to data collection and the response. They're actually making COVID-19 into some sort of racial issue. Last time I checked, of course, like COVID-19 actually kills all people. And so we should probably concentrate on the entire population of humanity than X group or Y group because basically we're all trying to survive right now. And so naturally, of course, we should probably fight for everybody, not just, you know, for like minorities or make it a racial issue. I think the best approach to all of this is not to mention race. Just focus on about like saving humanity, of course, and of course, try not to spread the COVID-19 towards other people. That's the only kind of response we need right now. Not trying to, you know, divide people based upon race, but uh, what do I know? Breaking, President Biden is considering reversing Trump's drawdown in Iraq by adding thousands of troops to combat growing terrorist threats in the region, as evident by Thursday's attack by the U.S. Embassy. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. The guy who voted for the Iraq war want to have some more conflict? Ha 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 <laughs> well, I honestly did not see that coming. Did you guys see that coming? Sorry, I did not see a guy who actually voted for the Iraq war, who want to have some more war or more conflict in his way. No possible way I could actually see that. Now look guys, it seems as though that the whole entire idea of Joe Biden supporting, you know, this idea of unity it's a joke. It's a true joke. His actions are just like showing otherwise. He keep on saying, of course, you know, that if you don't vote for me, you're not black. He keeps on trying to do all this stuff about racial equity, apparently, and try to connect racial equity with climate change and stuff. There's also these sort of freaking weird pronouns on like the White House site 
or basically they have like a gender neutral way of saying like Mr. and Mrs. And they're using like he, she, and they nowadays for like that site. And it's just so crazy to me. Like how all these policies are actually unifying Americans. How? Like the whole entire idea of course of trying to unify people is not a good of war again. Not of course try to hire people based upon their race. And not trying to you know have of course more racism and actually try to divide people by their sexuality by having these sort of trans people in women's sports. It's like how is this unifying? How is this actually unifying? But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.